one of the previous lectures the electrostatic voltmeter has been covered so in lectures uh, 2 and 3 specifically one of the students has asked a doubt on uh, bushing design of uh, high voltage electrostatic voltmeter so it is explained in this uh, lecture in more detail so this was the electrostatic uh, voltmeter high voltage electrostatic voltmeter on which a question was asked so here uh, this is uh, uh, 1000 kilovolt standard absolute voltmeter prescribed by house et al so it is mentioned that five section capacitor and oil insulated bushing is used to bring the extremely high voltage into the instrument tank instrument metal tank filled with the pressurized sf6 gas so let me zoom a little bit this is the electrostatic voltmeter here so you can see this is a high voltage electrode and this electrode is connected to this electrode through a central rod like this right so high voltage is available in this chamber in this metallic tank so the metallic tank can be this structure right so you can see here there are uh, tubes uh, capacitor tube he has given 600 kilovolts capacitor tube is given here this one and it is emerging out here uh, here this is this is 600 k sorry this is 600 kV tube like this so there is a disk air end disk here on the 600 kV capacitor tube and again gas in the disc is given here this one now the question is why such construction is and then uh, uh, how potential grading uh, will happen what is the need for potential grading etc these questions uh, were asked so when this is a high voltage here so this is a 600 kV high voltage is 1000 kV as you remember this is 800 actually this is 600 this is 400 and this is 200 kV right this are you know so there are five layers of uh, capacitors here but each layer uh, all layers are not equal in length you may see so so this is one length this is second length third length fourth length and then like that all capacitors are of not equal length and same case here also they are of different uh, lengths here so this is one thing and you see clearly uh, the voltage of these spheres is uh, uh, sorry rings is uh, decreasing from the high voltage end and this is at ground potential the tank is at ground potential now uh, 
how this will you know provide a field grading uh, is the question that we will deal in two ways first let us deal this problem by studying equipotential surfaces right now what are the equipotential surfaces let us carefully understand here if uh, for example if you have only metal tank here metal tank here and then a hv electrode like this then this is a hv electrode which is going into the metal tank now the equipotential surfaces let me draw using a different uh, color so this is uh, this this itself electrode and this ground itself are equipotential surfaces all other equipotential surfaces will be parallel to this like this then okay. color yeah this is an equipotential surface so here equipotential surface will be like this very crowded here in this portion and they, similarly they are very very much crowded here like this like this like this so what will happen the non-linear uh, are you know very huge uh, uh, crowded uh, equipotential surfaces will be there near the sharp edges like this and like this so electric field will be unevenly distributed uh, along the uh, length and breadth of this uh, electrode system so in order to take this high voltage electrode into this uh, grounded metallic tank this bushing system is used in this bushing system there are layers of uh, insulation materials above this high voltage uh, um, electrode and ultimately reaching to the ground potential now what uh, what 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 way we should uh, uh, take uh, precautions in this so since this is uh, high voltage and this is at ground, ground potential okay from this point to this point potential should decrease in a uh, in a successive manner successively and in a uniform manner rather so uh, if it is not uniform insulation at a particular portion may be highly stressed and that may cause the breakdown that is why it should be systematically decreased and the potential uh, potential should be in such a way that the field distribution should be more or less uniform or uniformly stressing the insulation wherever it is similarly inside the tank also here also just like uh, here here also it should systematically decrease but one difference you know the lengths are quite high in this region which is exposed in the air and lengths are lengths of bushings i am talking bushing different various lengths of capacitors the lengths are uh, smaller relatively compared to the outside air uh, conditions inside the tank the lengths are small obviously the reason is inside the tank sf6 is used which has higher breakdown strength outside it is normal air atmospheric air so therefore since breakdown strength of sf6 is high not only that you know these rings are simply replaced by discs here having a small radius of curvature you remember i think v by r is roughly equals to proportional to e electric field e therefore uh, 
when uh, a breakdown strength is uh, high we can offer to have less uh, r radius of curvature that is why not only the this height bushing height inside this is smaller but also the radius of curvatures are inside uh, whatever it is even high voltage electrode also are not of the order of this electrode right so this is uh, electric field considerations now in this case how the electric field will be how the equipotential surfaces will be now there are several tubes here and each tube is of same uh, width same insulation thickness actually these are oil tubes in which oil is filled and each tube is uh, terminated into a uh, insulating tank here insulating tank in which oil is filled so this is the ceiling of that uh, tube uh, by a disc electrode and this is the oil so oil can flow into the uh, tube of course when it is sealed there will not be any flow of the oil but oil will be there uh, and oil can be opened and uh, this chamber can be opened and oil can be filled into it so this is how the arrangement is made so the stress uh, between these layers or uh, in these layers of insulation should be uniform because it should not stress at a, in a particular tube higher stress and in another particular tube it is smaller stress so that is how the lengths of these uh, capacitors are uh, uh, you know changed and uh, i will discuss that in the next slide so here uh, so uh, electric field that uh, is uniform and the equipotential surfaces how equipotential surfaces is, is achieved above the tube above each capacitor tube um, a, a thin layer of uh, metallic uh, sheet will be laid until this for example this is the this is a cylindrical capacitor i am just describing the structure how it is so this is a cylindrical tube okay insulating tube but on this uh, on this uh, on this uh, a thin layer of uh, metallic sheet aluminum foil kind of thing is put like this so when in order not to expose this here okay there is a disc here metallic disc right and at the end of the disc there is a ring also that's what you know that this circular ring this is like this right and this is exposed to a tank which tank insulating tank in which again oil is filled so through this tube oil can go inside of course in this tube centrally one more capacitor will be there and then until uh, and at the at the center of it there is a electrode high voltage electrode also so this is the typical uh, setup that is given here therefore these metallic uh, sheets are you know uh, wrapped around the capacitors those will serve as equipotential surfaces like this so equipotential surfaces like this these are all parallel equipotential surfaces so between them there is insulation so the insulation is uh, the equipotential surfaces are made with such a potential difference such a potential difference that uh, v divided by the thickness of the tube is almost constant for all the layers that's how it is uh, designed so this is about uh, uh, electric field and then equipotential surfaces how they are designed and all in the next slide let us see uh, how the lens different lens uh, will cause the potentials uh, in such a way that electric field is constant so see if you see the central tube is of higher length the next level of capacitor is of a little lower length 
and the next level of capacitor is little lower length and then finally smaller length. Why? Why this kind of arrangement is uh, uh, given? Right? There are five capacitors, right? So, this type of arrangement is given just like in, in last semester, if you remember, we have studied um, transformers uh, uh, winding. Oh, sorry, in this semester only. In this semester only. In this semester, you have learned uh, how the transformer winding is trapezoidal in nature. You know, if you remember, I am simply drawing that. So, the winding is trapezoidal in nature. This is the case of high voltage uh, transformer construction. So, the outer layers, as you go on to the outer layers, the um, length of the uh, winding uh, decreases. The reason is, in order to maintain the equal stress among the layers, the actual, the profile that requires is a lo lo requires logarithmically decreases in length from the central uh, core. So, similar situation arises here. So, the central capacitor should be of higher length and the next capacitor has to be at the lower length because what is happening is see all all, capa all these capacitors must have uniform uh, electric field. They are of uniform thickness. There is no doubt. Uniform thickness. When they are of uniform thickness, the delta V by uh, R should be constant or T, 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 thickness. Delta V by T should be constant for all the capacitors. What is delta V? Delta V is the voltage across the uh, thickness of the capacitor. Now, voltage across the thickness of the capacitor means voltage across the capacitor like this. So, all these five capacitors must have uniform capacitance, same capacitance value. But, uh, a cylinder, a tube which is of higher radius will have higher area. So, if you assume the uh, thickness to be very small, then epsilon naught A by D you can apply here. D is the thickness of the uh, tube. A is proportional to surface area of the tube. A is actually surface area of the tube. Surface area of the tube, if R is the diameter, R is the, R is the radius, R into uh, 2 pi into L is the total surface area of one tube. Now, you see, in order to maintain the, um, maintain the capacitance constant, if R is increasing, obviously, you have to decrease L. So, that is what will happen in order to maintain C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 to be of same value, the length of the capacitor should decrease. That is what is happening exactly here. This is of higher length, this is of next higher length, this is a smaller length and next smaller, next smaller, next smaller like that. So, this is in order to maintain the electric field E constant, right? So, next thing, why this uh, big rings are of big diameter here? Because this is in air. So, and the voltages are to be, to decrease in a systematic fashion. And for this voltage level, this much diameter is needed in order to avoid the corona, etc. in air. Secondly, why these are required? Because on the capacitor tubes, we have put equipotential surfaces, very thin sheets. If there are no rings like this, that thin sheets will be having, you know, sharp edges here that will be exposed here. Those sharp edges having very low radius of curvature at the tip of the sharp edges will cause huge corona and may cause local breakdown also. That is why they should be carefully uh, taken out using, you know, connecting a um, ring 
through a disc uh, disc here that disc will be positioned on the uh, on the uh, you know this uh, metallic layer so this is what is the explanation uh, for the bushing design uh, how the stress grading is obtained in this okay if you have any further questions you can call me thanks for watching